What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back for the first time in a long time. It's been something like three and a half months since I last posted a video and I really didn't even mean to do that and I get the sense from people that it is starting to worry them. I've gotten a few texts recently that are like, everything good, man? Uh, you doing okay? And I'm like, yeah, I guess that is the effect of when someone just drops off the face of the earth. So here I am, and uh, I'm not here to talk about the Zach Bryan, Brianna barstool drama, or really any of my kind of summer things I was listening to, which was mostly the Muscadine album and the Red Clay Strays album. But I did want to come on here and just talk about everything I've been sort of doing in music because I'm actually like more active in music than I feel like I've ever been. It's just happening offline and I've not shown any of that to my audience and I'm always telling young artists, hey, take people on the journey with you. When you go on the road, when you mess up your first merch order, all that, like people want to see the highs and lows and I haven't really been taking my own advice in a few different areas of life and so um, I just kind of felt like I should give you an update. And the first thing I would say is about six months ago, I took a gig with RCA Records, um, this guy that signed like Childers and Coulter Wall and Red Clay Strays. Like he uh, kind of offered me this sort of consulting job in their A&R department where it's essentially like talent scouting, being boots on the ground in Nashville. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm still – Frankly, like I, it took me a minute to get my sea legs and learn kind of how this stuff works and learn the label side. And it's not something I ever thought I would do, but I have found it really interesting. And, you know, they made me a great offer. It's been so cool to actually learn how the label side of things works. They don't touch my YouTube channel or any of that. So I was just like, man, this is a really crazy good opportunity to just kind of experiment and see if this is a world or a kind of a place I could see myself growing into in the music industry. And so I've been doing that. That's been cool. Like I said, I'm not going to get too much into it, but uh, I hadn't really made a freaking salary in a long time, in many, many years. And so I'm not going to lie. Part of it was I was trying to take like, oh, I'm going to take two weeks, a month off of YouTube because I can afford to for the first time in like over five years. And then I just kind of got really long and I got obsessed, obsessed with making mosaic art. That was like a manic episode of a month. And then I'm kind of in a trading card collector phase, but I won't get into that. Anyway, I'm doing that with RCA. It's really cool. I hope they're okay that I talk about it, but hey, they don't control my YouTube channel, so I can. And then the other stuff I've been doing is this summer made two different projects with two different artists. And I haven't really wanted to talk about my attempts at being a producer. And I put producer in quotes because I am not the guy sitting there turning the knobs and running logic or whatever. But for the last like year and a half, two years, this has been kind of an area that I've been exploring with, uh, specifically with this one guy named Brendan Walter. I've always told him, I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna promote you on my channel. I that would be cringe. And I still kind of feel that way. And I feel so much damn imposter syndrome with both the label gig and doing producing stuff that it feels awkward to talk about. That's part of why I haven't brought it up on the channel is I'm like, I don't know. I feel like when you're changing or developing, it's like embarrassing. Um, or certainly feel self-centered to try to talk about it. I've just been trying to kind of like move in silence. But anyway, with Brendan, man, I think the world of him. I just sent him a DM to be nice February of 2023, just saying like, dude, you came up on my TikTok and you are good. You should put music out and we started talking. And I tried to link him with a big producer that uh, for the purposes of this video, I will call Austin. This, this guy kind of, I was like, dude, you should make his music. He's really good. And Austin uh, said, like, why don't you do it? And kind of challenged me to do it and was like, I think like y'all should work together. If you get him, then you should do it. And I can kind of help you get started. And so he booked us a studio in Nashville that spring of last year, we went and tried to cut two songs in and I'm sitting there trying to call the shots. In any case, that, that's been ongoing and me and Brennan like working with each other and then made a few trips to Austin. You know, he was in Austin and made a bunch more songs and they actually just all like the first seven that we did uh which are a little all over the place uh that's you know brendan called his ep 
I don't know what I'm doing yet. And we definitely didn't, and I definitely didn't. So we've worked with like really, really great engineers, Jeremy Ferguson and Nick Joswick. Then we've been doing stuff here in Nashville with a guy named Blake Wilkinson. It's been cool. Um, we've already cut 12 songs for next year for a whole other album. And then I've also been working with a guy named Brennan Edwards, which is cool. You know, he wanted to make a few songs and I was like, why don't you try coming to Nashville and we can do some, because I had my sea legs a little bit on this stuff, at least in terms of knowing here's how you book a studio and hire musicians and uh, just kind of, there was a lot to learn on that front of like, what is a work tape? Uh, you need to have it sent to the musicians in advance and then you're gonna go into the studio and you're gonna cut and like just learning the language of it is, has been challenging and interesting and then you go into mixing and then you have to get it mastered and then how do you distribute it and all that stuff like you know i've been learning alongside brendan for like a year and a half and uh it's complicated um it's it's expensive it's interesting uh but then with with brendan it was like a little bit more you know easy to understand because i've done it a few times but um you know brendan I'm not trying to claim any credit for him, like, or, or Brendan or anything. Like, it's, it's, uh, I, they're just two young guys that I think are totally different and make cool music. And, uh, to go in the studio and just try and help them articulate the vision of what they want their music to be has been cool. So, honestly, that's been a lot of my time. And, um, Brendan's EP is coming out November 19th. It's just four songs. Um, but we live tracked them, uh, and it was cool to do, and they're excellent in my opinion, I don't know. But like, can you see how it would be weird to want to talk about that as a guy that reviews music? Like, it's, it's, it feels cringe to be like, oh, you think you can do this, Grady? You think you, just because you've listened to music a lot, can suddenly think you should be someone in the studio giving musicians your opinion uh, that actually know how to do this stuff? And, and like, I feel that probably stronger than anyone, but at the same time, I feel like it would be so lame to not try um, when I was kind of given this option and uh, to, to try and produce. I was like, you know, I feel so weird about that, but I also feel like it would be so lame to not give it a shot. And I don't think I know at all everything that I'm doing yet, but I do think there's some similarities to how you review an album. Um, like the same way I might say to y'all, like, oh man, this album felt like a, like a picnic. Uh, you can say that to a great musician, a great guitarist, and be like, oh, you're kind of giving me blues bar. Could you give me prom night? And weirdly, that language can work in the studio. Um, and I kind of have to speak in vibe. And I've certainly picked up a lot more of a musical vocabulary in the process of making a bunch of songs. But I I'm interested in it, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I want to try and I want to walk through doors that are opening in front of me. Like the video game was a huge game changing thing to work on when I worked for Country Star, which is still going and still great. And that kind of made, woke me up to like, damn, there's like different ways to make money and do things in the world. And that's cool. And I guess just when the label thing came up, when the producing option came up, um, I, I always want to put producer in quotes, but I won't. Um, it's just... I'm driven by new puzzles and they're very interesting to me. I think I, in my soul, I need like new challenges. I certainly get how YouTube channels work. And like I said, I have no plan on getting rid of it, but it's been just extremely um, motivating to work alongside artists and try to help them achieve something and who knows if it works maybe it ends up being a big anchor on their career and they would have done fine without me but um there's something noble in trying i guess and it's just been cool that's a process making an album like and, and me and brennan recorded like that 12 song one that'll be out next year uh, not the ep that just came out yeah you can go judge if you think <laughs> like the production work is good at all but i don't know trying to trying to figure it all out has been really interesting i feel like i'm rambling I, I am on some level embarrassed saying this to all of you but at the same time i i kind of need to break this dam of telling y'all all the other stuff that i'm doing in the industry or trying to do because i feel like i can't even communicate about music without that context like that is most of my time right now. And 
when I try to like think about what would I say about this album, you're like, Ugh, well, is this awkward because so-and-so is going to open for this artist next week. And so I don't want to be weird about it. And, you know, just, I, I feel like getting, putting all this out in the open frees me up to actually just talk about music again, because right now I feel like I avoid it because, you know, my irons are in so many fires. That's not a good expression, but my hope is just to like break the dam and be like, hey, here's all the other stuff I'm doing alongside YouTube so that it's just not something I feel like I have to hide or talk around or any of that. So uh, I checked with everyone that I've mentioned in this video. Everyone's cool with me mentioning my involvement, but you know, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, but uh, you know, I don't wanna make too many promises about like, I'm gonna do so many YouTube videos and get really dialed. But like I said, I got no, desire to get rid of this channel or anything like that. Um, let's go listen to this, like, Zach Bryan song, I guess. You know, not right here on the video, but tonight when it comes out. Uh, that's all. <laughs> Love y'all. Thanks for checking in on me. Sorry to abandon. And uh, yeah, the year's almost over. That's so crazy. But country music, alive and well in my soul in my in my world and it's just being expressed a little differently who knows you know if you want to know stuff behind the scenes let me know i don't know is this video stupid i just need to give you an update so hey the dam is broken that's what i'm up to love y'all bye